Hey, super excited to be with you all. We are touring the hill in San Clemente, and today we're, t we're starting at the very top. Out in front of me, huge panoramic ocean views, which is what makes this hill community so, so special. And there are four tracts that make up the hill. Now, let me just clarify, there are many hills in San Clemente, but there's only one community called The Hill. That is the name of the community. It's on a hill and it's specific to four track neighborhoods, Broadmoor, Pacifica, Rancho Margarita, and Hillcrest. And Hillcrest happens to go the highest up on the hill, Hillcrest, and beautiful ocean views. And so as we start out here, we are up on Avenida Teresa. I've sold several houses on this street in the last year or two and all of them had booming ocean views and everybody who bought here is like ecstatic with their decision to buy up on this street it is kind of it's not a um part of it's not a through street it's not a cul-de-sac but it's a very infrequently traveled street so you're not going to be subject to um you're not gonna be subject to traffic like you would on a thoroughfare or a pass-through street. The pros to this street, obviously huge ocean view, quiet. It's a great street to walk. The cons, above ground power lines. So some people will say, oh, I hate the fact that there's power lines. Well, the good thing about the power lines, if there is a silver lining to it, is they're in the front. So they're not, you're not looking through power lines to see the ocean view but there are power lines up here on Avenida Teresa. So that's one of the cons, but otherwise there's not much to say uh, in the way of, of negatives. Somebody called the cops. <laughs> All right, now we're making our way to Avenida Salvador. Salvador is a, a busier street. It's got a double yellow and it kind of makes its way up, up to the very top of the hill in San Clemente and then back down towards the southeast side of town. And there are the houses on the left and the right here on Salvador are part of the Hillcrest community. But before we go any lower, we're gonna take a look here at Calle de Soto, another amazing ocean view street. If you, can, if you can get a house on this street, it's going to have a fantastic nine, 9.5 out of 10 ocean view. There's a couple of houses on this street too that have gone single uh, from single story to uh, two story. They were all originally built as single level ranch homes, but up in the Hillcrest community, there are no restrictions on building a two story. Now that comes into effect if you're looking, you know, if you're trying to buy something with an ocean view, you really have to think, can the person below me build up and impact my view? or trees, things of that nature. But if you look at the slope here, so we're just up on Teresa. If you look at the slope, it's long enough that if anybody on Calle de Soto, the street we're on, was to build a second story, it's not going to block the ocean view. And that's true for all of Avenida Teresa. And it's true for most of Calle de Soto. Most of the houses up here if the, if the properties below Calle de Soto here were to build a second story, the view would still be protected. There are a few exceptions as we kind of get lower on Calle de Soto here, probably starting right around 509 Avenue to Teresa. If the houses below 509 were to build up, you would probably get some uh, negative effect on the ocean view for the property here up on DeSoto. So again, we're in we're in the Hillcrest tract here, Calle de Soto, Calle Nina, Avenida Teresa, 
awesome, awesome ocean views from the Hillcrest track. And we're pulling up now to Avenida Presidio. Presidio is like the, the major, the main artery through the hill. Um, it starts and ends depending on which way you, which way you're starting from in downtown and ends over by the high school or vice versa. But basically that's, that's the run of Presidio and it will take you and meander through the entire hill. I love homes on the hill for how easy it is to get to downtown because it only takes about 60 or 90 seconds from anywhere on the hill to get downtown. That's one of the great attributes of the neighborhood. And how easy it is to get to the high school and the Albertsons and the shopping that's on the other end of Presidio. I can't tell you when I lived on the on the hill how many countless times I needed to run to the grocery store or whatever it might be and it only took a couple minutes to get down there. So we're still here in, we're still on the hill in the Hillcrest track. And this particular section of Hillcrest is interesting because on the ocean view side of the street, all single level. On the non-ocean view side of the street, all multi-level. So two stories with, some of them have actually three levels, but they're two story homes. And the way that these were designed is so that these two-story homes on the right-hand side of the street actually get ocean view over the single level. It's a very unique attribute to the Hillcrest tract. It's really the only tract up here that ever had any two stories in the original builds. So if you were targeting a really, really good ocean view and, and you called me or texted me and said, hey, Ryan, I want the best ocean views. I don't want my view to be impacted. I would be saying, okay, I need to call every homeowner on Teresa, DeSoto, Calle Sonora, and I'm going to reach out to them. I have all their contact information already and see if there's anybody that's coming up that wants to sell. And I would tell you to anticipate paying anywhere between two and three million dollars depending on the condition for the property. That is in the Hillcrest track. Now, there's one other street, which we've already mentioned, Presidio, that has several Hillcrest homes on the street. And they also have fantastic ocean views. A few of which, you can see all the cars on the, on the street here parking. It's because there's actually two projects taking place where people tore down or, or removed most of the original house and decided to build a 3,000 plus square foot two-story home like this one to our right here. That property has an amazing ocean view straight through the home. It's gonna be a roughly 31, 3,200 square foot house. The cost to build something like this, of course you could spend as much as you want, but I would budget anywhere from 1.4 to $1.8 million to build a home like that. And here to our right, this home recently sold for 1.8 million and is gonna end up having a 1.5 to $2 million new home built on it as well. So you can see, if that sold for 1.8 and is gonna be having a 1.5 to $2 million property built on it, that homeowner's into their entire construction cost plus the cost to acquire the property is well over $3 million. And that's because there just really isn't anything like that, what those homeowners are gonna build in San Clemente to purchase. So it's worth it in their opinion. Now I have right now a house listed 2,400 square feet, pretty much new construction. It's the only one that's ever been listed after somebody built it for sale for 3.2 million, which is why I think it's a good buy. And that's on Calle Pescador. But that's something too, if you were looking up here that we can talk about, hey, a fixer upper, what would that, what would that cost? How much should I budget to buy the fixer upper? How much should I budget to purchase or to, rather to uh, spend on the remodel? These are all things that factor into the equation for people that I have who have bought up here or are currently looking to buy something up here.
Okay, we're pulling out on Presidio. This is gonna be the last section of Hillcrest Homes. Some unique ones here that actually have three car garages. That's super rare. Fantastic views. This is kind of the flat section of Presidio where it tees into Avenida Salvador. Single loaded, no homes on the right, only homes on the left. At least for this little section it is. Here's the three-way stop sign. Stop sign for, for two major streets, Presidio and Salvador. And then these homes up here on the left-hand side probably have one of the best views in town. Reason being they look into Dana Point Harbor, you can see all of Catalina, all of San Clemente. This home here on the left that was constructed was, uh, was an original home. The contractor tore most of it down, built a second story. It's a fabulous, fabulous home. And it's actually one that I use as an example of what can be done up here if you have the budget to basically build new or pretty much close to new. Now, as we make our way towards the, the downhill section of Presidio that goes towards the Albertson supermarket, there's a few custom homes here on our right. These were never part of the four tracks. They were just sold off as custom lots. Huge slope behind them. And then the track changes from Hillcrest to Rancho Margarita starting here on our right. And these homes here all start to get a really nice ocean view again. Sold that house there, the white one and the homeowner decided to build a second story up above the garage. It turned out really nicely. That's a popular thing to pop, pop the top and go up for like one master suite or one secondary master suite. I just made a left-hand turn here onto Calle Dorado. Fabulous street. So Presidio has a better view up where we were, but you deal with a little bit of traffic. You deal with a little bit of a shorter driveway and more street parking. Dorado, no through traffic. Pretty much you're driving on the street only if you live here. A huge slope up above from Presidio. So you don't, you don't really see any houses at all up there when you look out your front door if you're living on Calle Dorado. And Calle Dorado also has a long enough slope below it that if a home were to build two story, it would not block ocean view. So if you were asking me like another top, top street, this one being in the Rancho Margarita tract, Calle Dorado would probably be my number one. Mostly owners on this street, there are a mix of homes that are for rent and a mix also of homes that have been upgraded versus homes that are kind of more dated. There's a home up here on our right that I had just sold. Um, it closed in November. We're doing this video in December. Really nice Spanish style, 2,000 square feet, three bedrooms, two and a half baths. It has some really unique architecture. It's got this really cool turret that pops up in the middle of the house. Those roof tiles are handmade Spanish style roof tiles, so it has a really good look to it. Um, we represented the seller and the buyer on that property. The seller actually reached out to me, found me on YouTube and said, hey, I'm looking for something like this. And we had that property and he bought it. They're super thrilled with it. So that's a really cool uh, testimonial of how I've been able to connect with, with some of you. So do reach out to me. If you are looking for, if anything I've talked about resonates or you might be intrigued, tell me now. I don't care if it's three to five years in the future that you're gonna be doing this endeavor. Talk to me now, give me your email so that I can be sharing with you the properties that I'm getting ready to put on the market before I share them with anybody else. And you can start to track with me 
okay, this is what the pricing's doing. This is what the hot trend is up here. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter if you're three months out or three years, it's not too soon or too late to get on the same page. The best way to reach out to me is just to, to send me a quick email or a text message. My number's on this video, or you can click the links below and really quickly get on my website and shoot me an email as well. Okay, so we just turned on to Calle Pescador, another fantastic street. I was telling you earlier in the video, I have a listing right now on Calle Pescador, one of a kind. This house was literally designed by an architect to achieve a few big goals, which are dual master floor plan, so a master on the first level with all the other bedrooms, and then one bedroom, one other primary master bedroom on the second level for the homeowner, or when the homeowner gets older, they can move on to one level and still have the upstairs for kids or family or friends. But this house was built very intentionally and it's currently listed for 3.2 million. It's been on the market for a few weeks and there's several parties who are interested in it and we're just working with you know those groups to try and say, all right, who's gonna be able to buy this house? But it's a fantastic opportunity and this is something where if you were, if you were looking at houses with me, I'd be like, look at what they did here. This is a prime example of what can be done. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the ocean view. Ocean view from the hill. This is kind of a cool story as well. This lot here on our right is something that I listed earlier this year. Another great person that uh, reached out to me from YouTube and said, hey, we've had this lot in the family for year decades. What do you think it's worth? Do you have any buyers for it? And I did, I had a great buyer who's gonna end up building a 3,100, 3,200 square foot house there. And everything came together from reaching out um, off of a very similar video as to the one we're shooting now. Okay, so we just turned on to Calle Delicata. Calle Delicata is the highest Broadmoor tracked street. Up above us is Calle Felicidad, Calle Pescador, Calle Dorado, Calle Presidio. But what makes this street cool is it's the highest up for the Broadmoor track. And Broadmoor does have an association. Hillcrest does not, Rancho Margarita does not, Pacifica does, or Pacifica does not have an HOA, but Broadmoor does. It's not a lot of money, it's a quarterly HOA, and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about, it factors out to like about $100 a month. It's not hugely significant. And what you get for that is Broadmoor maintains the slopes, um, which is huge. They keep them planted, they keep them trimmed, they keep them watered. And then there's an architectural committee that makes sure if someone's improving their home, that they're keeping it tasteful, um, that they're meeting certain guidelines for landscaping and exteriors and interiors and things like that. And then the largest thing about the Broad, the most important thing about the Broadmoor, cannot build a two story. It doesn't matter um, if, if the other tracks have two stories, Broadmoor cannot go two story. There's a clear 17 foot height limit for all the Broadmoor roofs and all the Broadmoor trees. <clears throat> so if you're buying in Rancho Margarita on Calle Felicidad and the Broadmoor is below you, you never have to worry about somebody building a second story. Or if you're buying on Calle Delicata and you're worried about the people down below on Calle Velaria, will they build a second story? The answer is no, because Broadmoor Association protects the homeowners in the community from trees and, and two stories. So we just turned off of Delicata and onto Velario. These two streets both have really, really good ocean views. They're not gonna be as deep as Calle Dorado or Calle Presidio, but they are still 
very, very nice. Catalina end to end. Velario is the lowest you could go, the street we're on right now, and still see into Dana Point Harbor, which is a cool view. <clears throat> but really good depth to the ocean view, really good width to the ocean view. These Broadmoor homes are fantastic. And what I mean by that is when they were built, they were built well. The construction materials, the design, the way they were built, all they, they withstood the test of time and they were built in the early 70s, 72. Rancho Margarita, built in 65. So if you're buying one of those homes, we've got to inspect it with a little bit more um, intensity as far as the sewer and the electrical. We just have to make sure all that stuff checks out because it's got a almost another decade on these Broadmoors and different era of construction materials. So we're gonna get out of the Broadmoor here and go into the highest street in the Pacifica Tract, Calle Familia. There's actually one little section that's higher. It's, it's Calle Delicata and it's part of the Pacifica Tract, but it's it's just a small section. So that that's an that's a really interesting street too. But anyways, we're so we're on the second highest street, which is Calle Familia, in the Pacifica Tract, <clears throat> built in 1974. No height restriction here. It's definitely okay to build something with a second story, like you can see here. This house has a second story. Case by case here, if, if you're building a house on Kaya Familia or if you're buying a house on Kaya Familia, you do need to make sure that if there's a home down below, some sections of this street, it wouldn't matter if a home built up. Other sections, it does matter. A couple more two stories here. I might be emphasizing two stories a lot today, but that's just what we're seeing. That's what we're seeing in the marketplace is the costs of home, the cost of a home in California, as far as a price per square foot, seems to be only going one direction, which is up. And if you factor in an ocean view, things are even more expensive. So if you bought an 1800 square foot single level home, for a thousand dollars a square foot as an example and you said hey I want to add 500 square feet by putting a second story on the home you can expect to pay around five hundred dollars per square foot to do that that number might be a little high but it's a great metric for this for this conversation well when that's done you can still probably expect to sell that property for a thousand dollars a square foot so you can see you built for five hundred dollars a foot it's worth $1,000 a foot when completed. That's a great way to add value to a property. So more and more people have been doing that. It's a verticality game, which is happening in a lot of this state. So we do need to be careful, you know, and protect your investment to make sure, can somebody build, you know, and, and block your view. This is the last street we're gonna go on for today. This is Calle Robles. Another great ocean view. We're, the way that the blocks, the street numbers on the blocks are comprised up here is there's a 200 block, a 300 block, and a 400 block. And Pacifica is all 400 block. And we are far enough east to where the ocean view is super wide. I'm gonna put up some pictures from this house right here, 421 Calle Robles, and we sold it a couple of years ago, and you'll see how wide the view is. It's not super deep, it's deep enough, but you can't see into Dana Point Harbor because we're not high enough, but the view is still really wide and very special. So anyways, 400 block homes are further east and have wider views. 200 block homes are kind of tucked up against La Cuesta, and they have kind of more direct corridor views, maybe into Dana Point Harbor or a little bit narrower ocean views otherwise. And then the, the row going up the middle, the 300 block, they're, they're a pretty nice balance of, of width and direct views into Dana Point Harbor. 
So you can see if we're if we're analyzing Calle Robles and Calle Familia, this section of the hill is not very tall. So these homes here have to be cognizant. If somebody were to build up on Calle Robles, that would impact the view. As we get further down the street, there's two things that happen. One, the street gets a little bit higher up here in the middle of the street. And two, the homes start to look out over the Broadmoor, which if you remember, the Broadmoor can never go two story. So a lot more of the view is protected there. A great example of this is this corner lot, which we sold a couple of years ago. And this home, all of its ocean view is looking out over the Broadmoor track, which means it's protected and nobody can ever build up. So thank you all for joining me on today's hill tour. If you have any questions about, you know, what does it cost to remodel? What's the cost of construction? What's the cost of a finished property? What can I get a fixer upper for? These are all things that I have my finger on the pulse up here on the hill and I can get you inside information as to what's happening up here as far as listings are concerned, as far as, hey, that person told me they want to sell their house in two years because that's when their kids graduate and that's when they're moving out of state. I want to get you ahead of what's happening here if you have any intention of buying up here. So reach out to me, shoot me a text message, or send me an email, and we can start staying in touch. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.